Welcome to the container. This is where we keep all our storage supplies. Oil change pump, filters, some fishing tackle, a lot of junk too. But it's a windy day here in Alamorada. We're gonna haul Sarah's boat out, the Shallow Sport X3. We're gonna do an oil change on it. You know, it's time for 100 hour service. And I also wanna show you guys a little bit about trailering down here in the Florida Keys. When a ramp is perfect, it's easy. There's a lot of other ramps down here in the Keys as well as other places that sometimes the ramps ain't always perfect, but you gotta make do. So gonna give you a few tips and tricks on that. Let's go get this boat out and let's go get the oil changed. So we got gear lube here. We got our oil pump here to get out the dirty oil. We got one bucket for dirty oil. We get our oil in uh, bulk, so we get a 55 gallon drum of it. And that's how you save money if you go through a lot of it. So we buy in bulk, but we got a filter wrench there. We're gonna go to the barn now, go pump about a gallon and a half of oil in here or so in the bucket. And then we're heading to the boat room, pick up Sarah, then back to the house to start the maintenance. We do the basic maintenance ourselves. If you don't you know how to do it, you're not sure about it, just stay with the dealer. We're gonna pump this up, get as much oil as we need. We'll keep going. Having a problem with our pump. We did an oil change yesterday, and same thing. It was a little tight. Here, let's try here again. Took a this one's got there. about five gallons left in it, which is too low for that pump to reach there. So we're gonna see if we can dump it in here like this, not spill it. Oh, maybe it's ten gallons. It's heavy. I'm gonna have to put the camera down. And help me. This could be good. This could be like a comedy oil change filter. Yeah. I know. Pick up there. Whoops. <laughs> Ready? Your hands are getting disgusting and dirty. First tip, if you're doing an oil change, wear something you don't care if you ruin it. I just got oil all over my shirt and on my shorts, so it's gonna be a messy job. But the bucket's full, and we're gonna go to the house now. So we're back in the truck here. It's an F-150. And the 25 X3 is not a huge boat, but it's a decent sized bay boat. Our trailer's at the house here, so we're gonna pull into our neighbor's yard. Luckily, they don't complain when we go in their yard. If you know your neighbors, it's always a good thing because you can pull in their yard out, put the trailer away, or pick it up. And we're gonna back up here and get really close. And when we get out here, one tip I would give you guys that I've learned myself is we have lithium grease from Blaster. That makes the ball come on and off the hitch a hundred times easier. The other day, we could hardly get the hitch out of the truck and hit it with a little bit of grease. It came in and out so much easier when we pulled the deck boat out. So that's another little tip there. Anyhow, let's get up here, get close. Then we'll raise the height, get the plug in there and uh, get it latched on. You can use your camera too. This one has the camera. Sometimes it's tough to tell when it's 100%. But you can see that's really close there. We can just shift it over by our hand by an inch or two. So let's go check it out and see. This is a two and five sixteenths ball. We're gonna have to drop down a size because this is for the other trailer. So we're gonna pull this pin here, see if we can get it out there. And we just, like I said, we hit this with some blaster the other day. So it's actually sliding in and out easier. Cause you can see it gets all corroded. And no matter what type of trailer you're getting pieces, at some point, like, you usually get a little corrosion. Then it comes out like this. This will swap over, I'll put the two inch on it. Get that pin back in here. That right there like that. That put, that may drop down on there. I'm just gonna back up just half an inch just to make it a little bit easier. But this is the key right here. Just a little bit of this right here, a little bit of white lithium grease. We're gonna hit the ball with it. Like I said, we already hit this the other day. This will make all the difference in the world when your trailer starts getting stuck on there and your mechanism there is sticking that latches onto it, that makes a huge difference. So I'm gonna just back up an inch, we're gonna drop it on there, hook the chains up, plug the lights in, we should be good to go. So it fell on there just like that. But if you didn't put that grease on there, sometimes it gets stuck, you're jumping on the trailer up and down on it, and it's a real pain. So once we get this up here a little bit, we'll pull this pin out. Try to get up a little bit higher. You know what? That's so corroded that may not help us. We need some grease there too. Now we gotta crank this piece up here. We wanna get up nice and high so it doesn't catch the ground anywhere or hit. 
then I got an adapter for the lights we gotta plug in the back of the truck here because sometimes depending on the truck the trailer or your hitch and all that stuff your light plug you gotta use a different one so we'll get the clips on here next these here will attach to the truck there like that for a little bit of safety so this is our adapter here and different trucks and trailers you know plugs have different connections so we'll just put that in there like that open up our light plug like that and it should be good to go now Double check everything, make sure there's nothing behind us. We don't really need this here, so we're gonna pull this out. That's for the gear lube. I already got the oil out. I'm gonna pull out the oil change pump and uh, we're gonna do a big wide turn here. I'll show you kind of getting out. We're gonna, move, we're gonna remove all the obstacles in the way. So we got the recycling bin, that's gonna come in. And you can see it's pretty tight squeeze in here. The trees used to overhang, but we kind of trimmed them so we can pull a boat in and out of here without catching too many. But we may catch a few on the top when we come back. After you get your hitch on there, you wanna make sure you lash that down. With the grease, it goes super smooth and easy. Either put a bolt in there, so it won't open up. And you always wanna double check your lights in the trailer, because they do go out a lot. So I'm just gonna go tap on the brakes there, make sure they're working, turn on the turn signal, and we should be good to go. So we're pulling the trailer, we like to make as few turns as possible. We just went through an empty parking lot here. We got a good gap in the traffic now. Some of the roads and the keys here are very short. So if I pull up here, waiting to turn on US-1 compared to the old highway, your trailer will be in the road, you know, on one side or the other. So we try to avoid those turns. We'll try to take a, you know, a big long straight shot if we can through an empty parking lot or if there's a longer driveway, you know, cut over there. But anyhow, the ramp's up here about two miles. It's a little hidden ramp. It ain't perfect. It's kind of rock and gravel. There's a big hole on one side of it and the tide really affects the ease of it. You know, pulling your boat in and out of the water. Lower tide is better, but as you get older, you can't always pick and choose what time you can do these things. You know, Sadie's in school, Madison's with Claire at home, Sarah's driving the boat over, I'm driving the trailer over, and we just gotta make do with the conditions we have. So we'll see what the tides do when we get there. Either way, we're gonna get the boat out. Just uh, sometimes the truck gets a little wet and sometimes it doesn't. The best part is it's close to the house and it's free. So here we go, let's go uh, see if we get in there first shot. So this ramp here, a lot of people that live on sailboats in the bay use it. You can see there's six or eight Zodiacs here. We just left some groceries on a kayak. Sarah's been here waiting for us for a few minutes. She's got the power poles down, so that's one super nice thing about those. You can put them in there and hold her spot. It's actually low tide, so this is the best possible sea level for the ramp here. I'm gonna back in a little bit more so we can get this to slide up on here. I'm gonna get the front strap that ready to click to the ring eye, and we'll have her drive it up on here and see if we can get out here. They Sometimes these trees overgrow it, but they're trimmed back pretty good now, so the top's not gonna hit, which is good, because years ago, sometimes the top would hit here. That's kind of a pain, because you'd catch your awning on it. All right, things underwater submerged. There's a big hole here. Sometimes it's tough to get it out. You spin your tires, but we got four-wheel drive. That'll be on. We are gonna have to wash the truck down later on. Obviously, we're in the salt water, which you don't want, but it is what it is, so. Here we go. See if you can get up there first shot. We'll make sure it's straight on every snap while reverse. She'll adjust the boat by the throttle of the motor and kick it to the center. But we're in four wheel drive here. Let's see what happens. Go nice and slow. Ideally, we'd have the boat up on the trailer about another foot, but just the angle of the ramp, we're not gonna be able to get that. But we're gonna get straps on it in the back, which will help hold it down. We got the strap on it up front. We'll pressure clean the bottom here, but you can see it's all pretty good. There's a little growth there. We'll get that all cleaned up. We're doing an oil change and the main oil, you know, for the main engine there, plus the gear lube, the lower unit. And uh, we'll be good to go for another 100 hours. So there's a strap. You always wanna strap the boat to the trailer. We'll get that going like that. Get this one down here. This is a quick and easy one. Sometimes you have the ratchet straps, which are nice if you get super tight, but the mechanism kind of wears out a lot of times. So these are quicker and easier. I've never given us a problem. So then this tag on here, you should just pull up to the cleat here, tie around like that. Do the same thing on the other side. We'll be good.
Sarah said I ran over some of the plants. It's too close to the plants and she can't pressure wash that side. It's fine, we don't need those plants. She told me to move it, but now she's agreed to keep it where it is. That's fine. I'll the good news is, the further that way we put it in the driveway, the easier it is to make the turn out of here because once you get it inside here more, it's really hard to get around these rocks. So we got in there, small adjustments. I pulled it into the neighbor's yard, got it as straight as a shot as possible. And uh, you know, just small adjustment to the wheel. Got it there, we're gonna drop it down now. Start our oil change. Sarah has a bad shoulder she can't do, so. It's like turning a handle on a fishing reel. You get your workout in. Now one time what I had happen, This piece here got looped around like that and handed on my hitch and it messes up your brakes on there. So you gotta be careful that doesn't do that. So just make sure you pull everything away, whether it's your lights, your cables for your trailer there, or your brake clip there. Just hook it back there. I'm gonna drive the truck away now. Sarah's gonna get the pressure wash out. We're gonna start draining oil. The oil is nice and warm now, so it'll be easy to pump out. And hopefully we can knock this out in about an hour. At least the oil change part, the pressure wash take a little bit longer. So this is what I was talking about, you know, being a multi-hull boat, a trimaran. You have the bunks, the supports there that ride up underneath here. And you got them on both sides. So you just have to make sure that's centered because sometimes we've had it where it catches on part of the outside hull there and the boat will be kind of cattywampus on the trailer. You don't want that. So get them centered there, pull out, go nice and slow and get, and get it pretty easy. I smell bleach. Yeah. Secret weapon for cleaning gunk off the bottom of your boat. If there's algae and growth on the bottom of the boat, hit it with some bleach, let it sit for a few minutes, and you can see it turning white immediately. This yeah. was all covered with algae, green grass there. It'll help it. Then we'll get the power washer. As when I say we, I mean Sarah. You just have to wear a shirt you don't care about. Yep. <laughs> like I said earlier, I already got oil stains on this one too. This guy had bleach stains. So you're gonna hit the whole thing with bleach to run the growth this. You can see the algae here earlier, you can see it kind of green. You can see where it's white now. So that helps it. It just makes it easier to come off there. We're gonna undo these straps here, get that out of the way. So you're gonna pressure wash it, and then uh, I'll probably help do the oil as soon as she's done pressure washing, because I don't wanna get soaking up with the spray. I'm on Instagram. Sarah's pressure washing the boat. It's her boat though, so good for her. So this boat's gonna be for sale at the end of the year, and we're getting another one built. It'll be about two years old. Time for an oil change. We're gonna hose the motor down too, which technically it's an engine. We say motor all the time, you know, kind of interchangeably. Technically it is an engine. Some of you guys comment on that and we go into arguments, but you know what I say, you know what I mean when I say it, and I know what you mean when you say it too. All I know is when I write my check to Yamaha, it's to Yamaha Motor Corporation. So, but technically it is an engine. Let's get this up here, we'll see how it looks. We just got the cowling off. Everything looks really clean. You can see there's still lubrication on that. That's good. That's from the blaster, the silicone spray. There's a little bit of salt in here. The Yamaha cowlings are really good though. So very little salt in there. Certainly that brand motor, sometimes you pull the cowling off and it is caked with salt. We're gonna get the oil change going now. If you come over here, I'll kind of show you how we do that process. We're gonna pull our dipstick out. We're gonna lay that on the side here so we don't lose it. You don't wanna bend it. And this is our tube right here we run down in here. You can also drain the oil by pulling the big bolts on the back of the motor, but that can be kind of messy. We got a little 12 volt pump right here and we can just connect it right here to the, where the battery cables plug in at. We'll get this going. Got a good connection there. I'm gonna hop down here, flip the switch down and let's see if it goes. Ready to roll. There it goes. So that'll take probably about five minutes to pump out, maybe six or seven at most. We're gonna drain that. We're gonna drain the lower unit oil. We're gonna get the new fresh main oil going in there. I made one joke to Sarah and she sent me out here to do all the work now. She's eating chicken wings up there from Dylan's. But uh, we'll pull that filter off. We'll probably pull the prop off too. We wanna make sure there's no line in there. You know, we wanna make sure the seals are good. We got the new oil filter right here. I just put my finger in the fresh oil bucket over there. Just gonna loop that up a little bit, get that ready. Let's pull off this other oil filter right now. It's a little warm still, but we'll get that up here. And the trick is, filter wrench is gonna stay on there now. I popped it up by accident, wasn't thinking. Get that off like that and try to get it upright where you don't spill much. There's a little bit there where it hold it. 
So we're just gonna get a paper towel and we'll dry that up. But that's still pretty warm, but did good. We didn't spill it, make a mess. If you change oil enough, you're probably gonna make a little bit of a mess, but just have some paper towels or some rags to clean up with as you go. So just, you know, got paper towels handy there, not too far away. We'll wipe that up. Keep this as clean as possible. And when we put this new filter on here, you know, we already lubed up the O-ring there. We're just gonna hand tighten it. You don't really need to use the filter wrench to tighten it. Sometimes you can get them off without the wrench, but it's easier just to use the filter wrench to get them off. So we'll get that on there. Now you can hear the oil pump down there. You can hear it sucking a lot of air. So this is pretty much done. I'll just move it around a little bit. Try to get the last little bit. Turn that off, we'll open that up and start putting the oil in it. Good enough to me. My buddy Kyle gave me that pump. Kyle, we've had it for like three years now. I appreciate it. It was an old one he wasn't using and it's still working. If it doesn't work, just tap it with a wrench and it starts going again. But you can see the old oil there. There's like 110 hours on it. And we try to change it you know, right around 100 hours every time. But it's been lobster season, so Sarah's been using the boat. I've been out there a few times with her too and we've been having a lot of fun. You may be wondering how we're gonna measure this out. We're just gonna pour smooth and steady. And I know once we get about a gallon in there, we'll let it sit. We'll go a little bit more, then we'll just start checking the dipstick and see where we get it on the fill mark. Where's Andrew? We're doing an oil change. Get him over here. Oh, yeah, you're it's so good to see you. I know. I can't wait to pawn off our kids on you again. Our neighbors just came back from Michigan. Andrew loves cleaning boats and doing oil changes too. Stacy likes to bake cookies. We love them. The baby remembered Stacy and just asked where Andrew was. <laughs> they love that. That's brownie points. Yeah, so All right, we got a pair of yeah. pliers here. Always makes it easier to get the <laughs> cap up there. Get that right there. We're gonna get this filter oh in right God. here. That's a big old funnel there. I said filter, I mean funnel. We're gonna get that big funnel in right there. I'm gonna start pulling the new oil in there. Everybody be careful, you don't wanna spill this. And that big filter is good because you don't have to sit there holding it super steady, you know, it gives you a little room for error. It's gonna need a little bit more. And I'm just gonna guess, you don't wanna overfill it either. But let's start with that amount right there. We're gonna put the dipstick in here. Let's go check the level. Really? Did you think so? No, no one tells me anything. It said that's the temporary. Here we go. Which is great. Great right for us. Yes. So it's just above the fill mark there, which we don't want it any further than that because the oil filter is empty right now. And uh, once that fills up, it should drop down there about half an inch and we should be pretty good. We're gonna double check it one more time. I could have gone just a tad less, to be honest with you. But I'll check it once more here, see where we're at, to keep it honest. We're good, you know, it's just above the fill mark, so we should be good to go there. You always want to make sure you get your oil cap back on there. Just snug with my hand, don't have to tighten with the pliers because they always tighten themselves, I promise you. Let's go drain the gear lube out of the lower unit and uh, out of the gear case, I guess, technically, and let's go see how that looks. Yep, we filmed the permit video and then you guys went out a couple days later and somehow cut more. Which I would only believe because a school teacher was there. Yes, I was counting. She was counting. <laughs> yeah. Claire, can you say hi? Oh man, look at how You want to say hi? Where's your sister? at? Where's Sadie? Sadie's at kindergarten, but Claire's gonna help dad and mom. So in order to drain the gear lube here out of the gear case, which we call the gear case, the lower unit, you know, and vice versa, we gotta take the screens off. So we got an Allen key right here. We're gonna pull this bottom one off first. And these updated Yamahas last couple years, you gotta take off the top screen and the bottom screen because that's how you access the bolts there. The top bolt here and then the bottom one there. They used to both be in the bottom section there, but get that in there like that. Unscrew these. Then we're gonna pull that prop off too, just to make sure there's no monofilament and no braid in there. Now we just need to get a flathead screwdriver. I'll drain that right in there. So I didn't bring the big screwdriver home with me, but this is a medium sized one, so hopefully it works. The big one's better. It's gonna work, that's okay. We're getting it off. But I can tell you one thing we're gonna have to replace. Right here, that O-ring there, you can see it's split right there. So that's a good thing we're changing it now. And that's why you always wanna change those little pieces. That one little piece there could save you a lot of money and time and headaches. That bolt there's magnetic, so you can see the little bit of the metal shavings on there. And as the gear case runs, you know, there's fine little shavings there. Obviously the least the better, the less amount of them. 
but there's a few on there but it still looks good overall and there's actually it looks like on the bottom of that bolt there that's a piece of that o-ring there so we're gonna have to use a screwdriver and pop that off there too to clean it up better so just a little bit's coming out now but as soon as we open this up air will flow through there then it'll come pouring out a lot faster got the bucket right there should all catch here we go and it actually looks pretty clean you can see it there there's no water in it if it was water it'd be really milky but you can hopefully you can see the color of it but that honestly could have kept running that's good though it's preventative maintenance and uh i'm gonna tilt the motor just a little bit just so it drains in there a little bit better what does rob want yes rob I'm listening to some Brooks and Dunn, thinking of you. My Maria! Hi. That's what's on, can you hear it? How, is it really? Are you ready for filming in Sea Hunt Part Deuce? <laughs> Are we bringing Landon? We should, actually. <laughs> Alright, well let me know, we're doing an oil change right now. I can't afford to pay someone to do it like you do. Yeah, yeah, yes, you know me. Hey Rob. Landon's here filming you. We're doing an oil change. Yeah, Subi? Yeah, we're doing an oil change right now. You're on speaker. What up, Subi? What up, bro? Yeah, Subi. Subi getting the recognition he deserves. Subi flow. Charles posted something. Did Charlie post something? No, Charles posted Subi flow the other day. Yeah, he did. I saw that. I saw that. Yep. It's like all the ladies are going to start seeing that. Yep. All right, well, we're going to finish up this oil change, and maybe we'll see you this weekend, right? Yeah, yeah, we're coming for sure. Catch your own fish. I know. 200 pounds of Albert Simmons. All right, I'll give you a shot in a couple hours. Let me run. Bye-bye. Rob and them are in the process of buying a condo down here. He has lived at my house about 20 weekends a year for the last 10 or 12 years. And he's finally moving out. Thank God. All right, let's get back here now. So we got, this was the, this was the other O-ring here that was stuck on there that kind of melted. That's the bad one. So we're gonna put one of these brand new ones on. That one there looks okay, but why would you risk it? I mean, throw the old ones away and just put on two brand new ones. The magnetic bolt goes in the bottom, it's longer. Whoops. So that one's gonna get a brand new one there. And this is the top bolt here. That one's getting a new one there. Are you playing? How did How's I get- going down there, mechanic Bob? How did I get stuck doing the dirty work? You know what's funny? Nick never helps me do anything on the boat until the camera comes out. Then he's like, ah, I gotta help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny? Never mind. Claire, did you say hi to Landon? Where's Sadie at? Is she at school? She is? Do you want to go to school? You do? I'm big. You're big when you're big? Okay. All right, so let's go get the oil change pump. Let's get some fresh gear lube in there. People ask all the time what pump this is. It's from CDI Electronics. There's the number on it, but it works really well on the gear lube. So this just screws in here to the bottom of the gear case. We pressurize the pump. And all we're gonna do is open up this valve right here. So this is pumping through here. And as soon as that gear lube starts coming through there, we're gonna let it overflow for a few seconds, try to get all the air bubbles out. And then once it's full of gear lube, we're gonna plug it back in. We'll get the top bolt in first and the bottom one. That was the inline fuel filter, so it uh, catches grime and gunk before it gets sucked into the engine. So we change that every 100 hours, too, as part of standard maintenance. Nick took a phone call. We're just going to let it run for a second to make sure all the air bubbles get out. You have to put the top one in first, because if you don't, it'll all fall out the bottom when you take out the pump. I got on my phone, I answered a phone call. Sarah put the screens back on there, got the bolts in there. The gear lube looked good. Let's just pull the prop to double check it. I think it's gonna be fine because the gear lube is fine. A lot of times if there's line in there, um, the gear lube will have water in it. So, but let's just pull it just to be safe and let's go from there. We got a good pair of dikes here and some of you can get cheap ones, but get you a good pair that you can really 
maneuver around and grab and get a good grip on these things with. The hub shot again. Oh, I did get it. Oh. It did come out with the foam. It felt like the hub might have been spinning, so we're gonna pull this and double check the hub. The right tool is for the job, will always make everything easier. I don't see any line there. There's no line on there. That actually will catch the line right there. That's good that it's clean. So the seals are still good. And then double check it real quick and see. So it's a little worn. You can see that where it's getting pushed out there. So the hub is going bad, but it's not totally bad yet. But you can see the grooves in there, if you look at that right there. And I could tell that the hub was going bad when I was taking the prop off, because I could feel it spinning there. That's kind of a telltale sign. This hub is wearing, you can see all the wear and tear on the rubber piece there. You could probably use it and get some time on it, but we don't want to break down offshore, offshore there, you know, and spin a hub. So we'll just go get a new one. It's like $65. It probably costs like $3 to make, but it costs 65 bucks, so. All right, go get a new one, Sarah. So we're just gonna hose the motor down. You know, we don't want to spray it like an air intake, but we still want to knock off any salt. Then we're just gonna hit it with a little bit of silicone spray. And uh, now the motor's in really good shape. There's very clean, very little corrosion, a little bit on the spring right there, but besides that, you know, everything else on the block looks good. And... The silicone spray, want to keep the motor looking like new. And this boat's gonna be for sale, like we said, at the end of the year. So in a few months, it'll be going up for sale. All the bolts there, all the springs for all the latches, the block, the power head, even the plastic. I mean, not gonna hurt it, but uh, we're just giving it a nice coating and we're almost done here. So as we get that prop back on there, we'll be good to go. $65. See, I don't get everything for free. We did get a 10% discount. So it went down to 59 with the tax, it was still 64. Let's get that hub out of there. Let's get these back on there. And I've seen them where they completely disintegrate. The other ones would have lasted for a little while, but they're going out. But basically it's gonna go a hard one, a soft one, and then a hard one. Let's see if we'll to get it lined up there, right? Okay, let's go tap it in there with a the wrench. We should be good. We're in flush now. Up tight against there. Get the prop back on here like that. You gotta get the little hole to put in the cotter pin, the cotter key in there. You gotta get the hole lined up just right. A new cotter pin would have been ideal in this case, but we didn't get one, and I'm not going back to the marina to get it, so we're going to make this one work. Props back on, fresh gear lube, fresh engine oil, Sarah pressure wash the bottom. The service work is done for today. Sarah's going to mess with the trolling motor. I think the remote might have got wet again recently, so it's acting up. So we're just going to double check the connections and the remote. New hubs in it. We're going to throw these old pieces away. They're all beat up. And we're going to put it back in the water tomorrow. It needs a touch of a bottom paint, but We'll probably wait another month and then touch it up. And this boat will be for sale, like we said, so a few more months. We want to give you an update on the fish tank. I've been working really hard on it, getting it really nice. Just kidding. <laughs> Sarah's been doing it. We've had some help from some friends. They've been helping get some new corals and new fish. But check it out here. Sarah can tell you a little bit about it. Sarah, what have we added in here lately? That's uh, Daddy, the clownfish I've had for 21 years, so she's the queen. Well, she didn't have them the whole 21 years. No, but, but I've like had her within my friend's tanks and stuff, like 21-year-old clownfish. We put a fox face in there, the blue tang, dory, everyone knows the tangs. Pygmy angelfish, royal grandma, here, look at this one. That's a mandarin goby. They're pretty cool, they just eat copepods off the rocks. So kind of like little hummingbirds in the tank. Some new corals, brain coral, 
mushrooms, acropora, hard corals from the Pacific. Oh, look at this though. That is a little tiny Pacific clam. Oop, I scared him. Here, look at this magnifier. Look at him through there. Oh, that's cool. It has kid fingerprints on it. So yeah, that's a little blue clam from the Pacific, but they, they, they grow them in tanks. They don't harvest them from the wild. Hope the power doesn't go out for hurricane season. <laughs> if you want a place to dump money into besides a boat, get a fish tank. Yeah. But anyhow, it looks really nice. It's beautiful. It's the centerpiece of the house. Sarah's done a great job on the fish tank. And thank you to the couple people who helped us out with it as well. But it's time to go put the boat back in the water. We're not going to paint the bottom now. Maybe another month or two. It's still good enough. So let's go uh, drop her back in. Sarah will take it back to the marina. And we're done for the day. Another car pulled here, kind of blocked it where she couldn't turn. And I took a phone call. I was trying to sell some boats. We got some boats listed for sale and uh, trying to get some guys in a Freeman. So we'll see if that goes through. Okay, I'm gonna drive. Sarah's gonna jump in the passenger seat. We got Claire with us. Time to go back to the truck. Time to dump the oil out. We got an oil bin here. And a little thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. I want to offer you all a discount on some Stan's gear. Head to the website stansfishing.com for any shirts, hats, shorts, board shorts, fishing rods. Type in X3 since we just did a uh, oil change in the X3. You can save 20%. So head on to the website. Just a little thank you for watching and for the support. Sarah said don't run over her plants. I think I got him. We're back. We're gonna get the trailer here. The key is to get it as far over this way as possible so the cars can still drive through here. And it won't be in the way. We're gonna hit it with the fresh water, wash her down. That's gonna wrap up this video. So another oil change done on the X3. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. A lot of you guys are not subscribed. And I'd love it if you did. And if you want any gear, any shirts, any shorts, any hats, head to the website, stansfishing.com, and go check it out. I think you really like the gear. So hopefully we'll see you down here now. I'm right at Bud and Mary's. Come on down, go fishing, stay with us. And that's all I got for you. So we'll see you all next time.